Family and friends, top of the day, it's Friday and you still ain't got no realtor. Parliamentary procedures are about helping people run meetings efficiently and as fair as possible. This should sound familiar to most of my fraternity and sorority members. If you want to know how to turn a 15 minute conversation into a three hour back and forth, teach folks how to introduce emotion. You will have somebody put emotion on the table, then a different person must second it. Then you move into a period of discussion. After the discussion, the body votes on the topic and this goes on and on throughout most of the meeting. The motion usually ends up getting tabled to the next meeting to talk about the next meeting after that. Now, let's switch gears for a minute to introduce the man of the hour. Henry Martin Robert was a general in the United States Army. Throughout his career, Robert joined various associations and groups. He was eventually elected as chairman of a group and had to learn a little bit about parliamentary procedures. In his research, he realized that there were only a few books available on the topic. In addition, the information provided was conflicting and this frustrated the general. He went on to publish his first book in 1876 and the book sold 4,000 copies in just six months. Let's unpack this to add proportion. In 1870, the U.S. population was a little over 38 million. In 2020, the same population grew to 331 million. I guess Errol Musk was right. We were all put here to procreate. He and his son, Elon, have a total of 13 children between the two of them. Their family dynamics are unique, so I'll get back to the U.S. population and General Robert. His book sold 4,000 copies shortly after the Civil War ended in 1965. The end of the Civil War started the Reconstruction Era, or Jim Crow, and the ratification of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. The 13th Amendment is essentially an adjustment to something in the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights was comprised of 10 amendments that established the foundation for the United States. It was the living constitution for individual rights at the time. Speaking of time, let's go back to the end of the Civil War and Reconstruction era. Stay with me. I'll tie in Robert's rules and parliamentary procedures soon. Reconstruction means to reconstruct an existing structure, or in this case, the way the company had been governed. This is why the 13th Amendment is so important. What does the 13th Amendment do? It abolished slavery with a caveat. The amendment abolished slavery, however, the exception or caveat is this doesn't apply when being punished for committing a crime. So, in theory, all slaves are free at this point until they commit a crime. When they commit a crime, they become enslaved again and the 13th Amendment permits this exception. Prior to the 13th Amendment, slave owners would punish slaves by whipping them or some other gruesome tactic in response to wrongdoing. Now, they have a free pass to just allow the law to administer human servitude. The reality is that whether someone is enslaved because of a crime or simply against their own free will, it is still slavery. Institutionalized slavery through our penal system. What have slaves been doing up until this point? They have been enslaved, working for free, and being traded for high dollar in most cases. It was even proposed that three-fifths of this population be used in the electoral process. This was one of the reasons we even had a civil war in the United States. To stay on track during this time, what would be considered a crime within a population of slave owners and the enslaved? What if the slaves wanted to turn three-fifths into an entire population? As a country, we should have revisited the declaration at the part that states all men are created equal, but we didn't. Slaves were never essentially given rights at all, and in most cases, the pursuit of these rights were disproportionately criminalized. Now, we can go back to the caveat of the 13th Amendment. Institutionalized slavery, or the chain gang in Georgia, is going to be our penal system, prisons, jails, or whatever you prefer to call getting locked up is a haven for legal slavery. In his LaQuint Dickey monologue in Django, Samuel L. Jackson stated, Now when you get there, they're going to take away your name, give you a number and a sledgehammer, and say, get to work. One word of sass, they cut out your tongue. They good at it too. You won't bleed out. Oh, they does that for you. They're going to work you. 
all day, every day, till you back him out. I used this clip in a couple of my previous videos. He played the hell out of that role. Remember, when I said I'd tie Robert's rule and parliamentary procedures into this all, I move that a motion be made to table this discussion into our next meeting next Friday, August 5th. Do I have a second? In the interim, check out A Beautiful Mind on Monday for motivation. We'll get into the 14th Amendment and how it guarantees citizenship to everybody born or naturalized in the U.S., including former slaves. Happy to help. Make it a great day.